The opening round of the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series was action-packed. Every position hard fought from start to finish. Expect more of the same in round number two from Sunset Speedway. Let's get off your seats and get ready for the start of the NASCAR Pinty Series. Three wide on the inside, two wide on the inside. Five side quarter on your tail, clear all around, one back. Way to go, bud. In race number one, it was all Trayton Lapsovich and Pete Shepard until the kid from Quebec came a knocking. That's it, buddy. Woo Raphael Azar came to sunset and took charge. He grabbed victory for race one. Now the stars of the NASCAR Pinty Series are back at Sunset Speedway for 125 laps of hard-nosed short track action. Welcome to the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. We're at the third of a mile Sunset Speedway as we ready for the General Tire 125. Hello everyone and welcome to what should be a good old short track battle between some of the best racers in Canada. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross while Todd Lewis and Kendra Adams are trackside. 17 late models getting prepped for round two of the 11 race series to declare a NASCAR champion here in Canada. A coolish damp night here in Innisfil, Ontario, as we get a look at the Fast Eddie Speedwear point standings. Lassard holds a four-point lead over Ranger. Tagliani had a quiet yet productive race one, putting him in third in the standings. Look at Shea Gimmel. Nice to see him up there after his maiden voyage in a Pinty Series car. Race one, the Frontline Workers 125 was everything that could be advertised. Lots of hard-nosed racing, three lead changes. Yeah, Dave, Ontario short track namesake Shepard and Lapsovich has dominated the first three quarters, but then that number 80 Chevrolet of Lassard came a calling and he finished strong. And it was a short track battle. There was lots of contact around this third of a mile Sunset Speedway. Sparks would fly at times. It, uh, aggressive racing. They were elbows up. Putting these fiberglass bodies to use, many of them rubbing the panels off of these cars on their way to, to what they hoped were solid finishes. But you know what? With fans back in the grandstands here at Sunset Speedway, they were treated to a dandy. In the end, it would be the youngsters' second win in just three Pinty Series starts. Quite a finish. An amazing race for young Raphael Lassard. But now... The drivers are strapped in and ready to go for race number two at Sunset Speedway. When we return, we'll fire up the motors for the General Tire 125. The General Tire 125 from Sunset Speedway is brought to you by Quickwick, the world's number one fire starter. By Total Quartz Oil. Keep your engine younger for longer. By Mopar. We built it. We know it. And by Das Metal Studs and Rebar. Proud partner of RGC Sports in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Well, the cars are fired up. Let's send it trackside to Kendra and have they line up for tonight's race. Thanks, guys. Pole position was decided by fastest lap in the last race. So Andrew Ranger will roll off P1 in the General Tire 125. He was telling us before that the championship is his goal this year. Track position means everything here, and he's hoping for a top three. He had a pretty good run in that purple and yellow car, the 51, just leaving your screen. But keep an eye on that APC number seven. Pete Shepard was very quick in race one. The other driver I look for as well is the Castro Edge 17 of DJ Kennington. Before fuel pump problems, he had a really fast dodge. A lot of drivers to watch in this one. So let's take a look at the E3 starting lineup. And as Kendra mentioned, on pole will be the 51 of Andrew Ranger. Outside of him, winner of race one, Raphael Assar. DJ Kennington will roll off third. Pete Shepard, the third in the seven, rolls off fourth. To row three, we've got Alex Tagliani in the 18. Trayton Lapsovich in the 20. Starting seventh, it'll be Kevin Lacroix in the 74. And the 22 of Mark antoine Camaret. Looking back to row number five, that's where we find the 52 of Alex Gannett and Brett Taylor behind the wheel of the number three. Row six is L.P. Dumoulin and Shea Gemmel. A little bit of work to do for those two drivers. Row number seven has Mark Dilley in the 64. Alongside him is teammate T.J. Renamato in the number two. 
In the eighth row, it's Brent Weller in the 61, Larry Jackson in the 84, and rounding out the field, Dexter Stacy in the 92, Chantel Kalika in the 98, but it doesn't look like Dexter Stacy's gonna make the call for the green. Yeah, it suffered incredible damage on that 92 in race number one after getting caught up in a wreck midway through the first 125 race here at Sunset Speedway. But as we mentioned, it is a damp, cool night. You can see the race lining is dry, but there is a little bit of moisture on the outside. Let's take a look at the E3 Spark Club's race analysis. Again, 125 laps on this third mile oval. The condition's quite different from race number one at Sunset Speedway, much cooler under, under the lights of the Speedway. Yeah, so the tempers will likely get a lot warmer. That's generally what happens when the weather cools off. The track temperature also cools off a little bit. Watch these cars slide around through this 125 lap event. So lined up behind the pace truck and the lights go off. We are one lap away from going green here in the General Tire 125. Who are you watching, Adam? It's so hard. Again, I go to DJ Kennington, that 17. He's got something to prove. He was quick. You don't see many mechanical failures on the 17 of DJ Kennington like we did in race one. Larry Jackson finished with a top 10 in the O'Neill Electric number 84. See if he can better that here in race number two. Pace truck is in. We are set to go green. 125 laps. Tracy Harrison waves to green. She's a nurse from Royal Victoria Regional Health Center in Barrie. Outside the 20 in the corner. Field rumbles into three. Lassard had the advantage, but he just missed it going into the turn. The car pushed up. Andrew Ranger going to lead lap two. See the tire pressure still low. The nose of the 51 of Andrew Ranger dove down on the racetrack. He saw little sparks from the nose dragging. But as soon as those, the heat comes into these general tires, that'll fix itself. Well, exactly. They have to start with the tire pressures low enough that they build to where they want them. These teams are so smart, they get things set up to when they get to optimal temperature, which they're not at yet. That's when the ride heights are right. That's when you'll see fewer sparks out the bottom of these cars. And because it's only 125 laps, no half scheduled back. pit stops. One back. One half. Great job. Now put it on cruise control. Let them fight it out. There's three wide behind you. That's MP Edouard, the spotter for Raphael Lassar, driver of the 80, out in front. And that's what he's seeing, this battle for second spot between DJ Kennington in the black and gold number 17 and the purple and yellow number 51 of Andrew Ranger. Yeah, Kennington looking aggressive right off the hop. But then again, you see Raphael Lassar out in front all by himself. You don't want to let him get comfortable in the car. Interesting talking to DJ Kennington before today's event. Historically, hasn't really had a lot of great runs here at Sunset Speedway. He's been frustrated with handling at times, but felt good about his race car in this one. Well, historically, I mean, Alex Tagliani, interesting choice of words, had an historic run here at yeah. Sunset Speedway, dominating events here. But really, who do you point to as the dominant car in a field this heavy? On board with Pete Shepard and the Dave Jacobs Racing number seven. All single file, half back. And you can see the bumper starting to come out already. A little nudge on DJ Kennington. Uh, racing in Ontario this season has already been very physical. Other late model series, what we saw in race number one. I mean, it's clear these drivers are ready to get out there and do what needs to be done to get where they want to go as we look back at Kevin Lacroix and the bumper to bumper number 74 Dodge. My mistake, we're looking from the Kevin Lacroix 74. That's Alex Gannett in the 52 whose front bumper we were just looking at. And, and Sunset Speedway, a third of a mile oval just outside of Barrie, Ontario, about an hour north of Toronto is a very racy track. It does have two solid grooves, but it takes a little while to get that second groove worked in. You can see right now, the bottom groove is the place to be. It is for now, and eventually, they normally settle into a higher groove, which is why you see so much side by side. Ooh, it's not that hard to get your nose to the inside of somebody, but it's very challenging to complete that pass. As we can hear Stephen Simmons, the spotter for the 17 at Kennington, giving him giving him some encouragement, letting him know what Pete Shepard's up to. 
I think DJ Kennington knows what Pete Shepard's up to. He can feel him on the left rear quarter of the number 17 Castrol Edge Dodge. Brakes already glowing, cherry red on the front of DJ Kennington, at least on the right front from what we saw in that shot. Tag Piani battling the inside of Andrew Ranger. Ranger's gonna have to get comfortable. Trayton Lapsovich now to the inside in that number 20, and they're lined up behind him as we ride on board with Kevin Lacroix. Yeah, getting stuck up on the outside is not necessarily a place you want to be, and there you see more sparks from the nose of the 20. And, and Sunset Speedway being relatively new, it was resurfaced not too long ago in about 2009 it has started to build some character over the years and by that there are some bumps here and there down the back straightaway into turn number one so the drivers will start to learn that and learn where their cars settle and where they don't it's not a rough racetrack but as you say those bumps there's dips where the car gets light so these drivers really have to be mindful of where they charge where they get overly aggressive because they also have to maneuver these dips are starting to hear rumblings of problems on the 51 of Andrew Ranger and again he is struggling to keep it down in that inside group now the 74 of Kevin Lacroix the man from Saint Eustache Quebec will put the bumper to bumper dodge alongside that Rick Ware racing entry Lacroix on the inside right behind him is Alex Gannett in that 52 and Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22 we talked about it earlier Andrew Ranger was in trouble hung up on the outside and he is still in trouble. Yeah, he did manage to get down to the inside, but it just won't stick there. Inside, and your bumper. Inside, inside, and your door. Door to door. The hall behind the 20, if you want it. Listening to Colin Livingston, the spotter for Alex around. Tagliani is number 18. It always amazes me how calm they can be with how fired up the action is on the track. And there's so much a part of the team. Like, when there's trouble, they feel the trouble. When there's victory, they feel the triumph. But they have to stay that calm because their job is to keep their driver cool and collected, even when they're not. Air Rick Ware racing entries of 52 of Alex Gannett, the Moto Limite number 52, as I mentioned, alongside his teammate as Ranger continues to truck backwards. Mark Antoine Cameron, the Paillet Chevrolet, he's in there as well. And this is a multi-car battle for the seventh spot on the racetrack. So seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, on back, all in this mix-up. And you can see a lot of body work missing from the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. A lot of duct tape at the front end of the 22 machine, but it's not slowing that car down. Quick ride on board the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin. Now have a look as the leaders start to make their way through lap traffic. And Kevin Lacroix giving a little bumper to TJ Renamato. Outside with the two, door to door. Clear, clear. Renamato, Brent Weller in that 61 going a lap down early. Just over 25 laps completed in this general tire 125. A torrid pace being set by Rafael Lazar. Now you can see the lap down cars lining up along the outside, letting the leaders have that inside groove. There is Shea Gamble again, finished in the top five in race number one and keeping his nose clean in that Ed Hackinson racing number eight. Some amazing drone shots from high over top Sunset Speedway really give you an idea of, of what the rain did to this racetrack earlier on and what grooves they can run. Couple drivers have been going at it pretty hard recently. The 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. We take a look at Lapsovich at work. And problems, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix has come to a stop here on the front straightaway, just heading into turn number one. An abrupt stop. He was up to speed coming off of turn number four and slowed down very dramatically, coming to rest just at the end of the front straightaway prior to the entry of turn one. Car is off. The bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge sits quiet, and you can see the steering wheel being pulled off. Kevin Lacroix is set to hop out. The window net's still up, but like you say, the steering wheel has come off. That's not a good sign for Kevin Lacroix. The transmission won't go into gear. You still got your radio on? 
Well, Donnie Thompson Jr., the crew chief on the 74, tr trying to talk to Kevin Lacroix, do as much diagnosis as he can. And the 51 of Andrew Ranger down pit lane as well as the crew goes to work. We were hearing possible broken shock, Todd. Guys, the 51 team has determined it's not a shock. It is a sway bar bracket that is a problem. And that's why that crew is swarming underneath the hood, trying to correct that problem on the left front of the 51. Steve, problems like this are not easy to fix at the racetrack. I mean, you get a car back at the shop, no problem. We'll have the bits and pieces. They got the welder. They can they can do what they need to do. On pit road, you're so limited with what you're able to repair on these. More importantly, caution laps count in the NASCAR Pinty Series. We continue under caution from Sunset Speedway. TSN is your source for all that is NASCAR in Canada. We're at Sunset Speedway for the General Tire 125, race number two of the 2021 season for the NASCAR Pinty Series. Still under caution, working lap 37, Chantal Kalika will get the free pass. She's down in 13th, finished on the lead lap in race number one. She's been looking good out there. I mean, flew in, not a lot of practice for Chantel Galica in the race car for the first time for these opening two events. So doing a nice job. Yeah, wasn't expecting to race here at all. As a matter of fact, got her NASCAR medical just earlier this week, jumped on a plane and came here to Sunset Speedway and did a fantastic job and doing another stellar job here in race number two. But the field lines up two by two behind the pace truck. It will be Raphael Lassard and Pete Shepard once again as the work continues on a championship contender. Andrew Ranger down pit lane. Andrew Ranger with problems. Kevin Lacroix with problems. DJ Kennington with issues in the first race. These are a lot of heavy hitters. Yeah, and every point counts in the 2021 season as we're back to green. Rafael Lassard and Pete Shepard side by side through one and two, still in formation. Shepard with a good drive off, trying to squeeze Lassard down as low as he can. Lassard moving up the track as much as he can. Hello there. And they start leaning on each other once again. You can see Lassard trying to open up that bottom just a little bit, maybe push the seven up into that wet groove on the outside of the speedway. Oh, the slip up by the 80. And Pete Shepard, I mean, he's gifted with the race car. So if he feels Rafael Lassard maybe used up a little bit more of the seven car than he felt he should, he'll lighten him up a little bit down into the corner, make life difficult for the young Quebec racer. Pete Shepard has been racing in the APC late model series in Ontario, but he's no stranger to the NASCAR Pinty series. Five wins to his credit in his NASCAR career. And he's had to fight hard for some of those wins. Ironic that we look at the 17 at Kennington. I remember a race in Saskatoon that got quite physical at the end, and Shepard came out on top. And a little nudge from Trayton Lapsovich, not afraid to use the bumper in the RGC number 20. The quick, quick backed entry moves up a spot as DJ Kennington now on the outside. Lapsovich goes to third. Aggressive move by Lapsovich. Kennington up on the high side with Alex Gannett down low, but boy, that 17 really rolled the top of the corner well. We're on board with LP Dumlin. He runs in the seventh spot right now in the number 47. Trying to work the outside around Alex Gannett in the 52, but that door closes pretty quickly. Now a nudge from the 47. And one driver is out of this one early, standing by with Todd. Kevin Lacroix out of the car. This has been a frustrating night here for you. What happened? Uh, I don't know exactly either the transmission or the differential, but uh, feels bad. The car was really good, so I think it was uh, the pace was good. I think we were fast, so that's that's a shame. Uh, next time. Something was different about Kevin Lacroix tonight. I mean, we're used to there's people you're used to seeing first or second. I mean, they are the pace setter. We've been so used to Kevin Lacroix setting the pace almost everywhere we go for a number of years now. Uh, that was uncharacteristic of Kevin, even with the top five car, but not the night, not the way he wanted it to go. And how strong he was here in 2020 during the Pinty's Fan Cave Challenge, two stops at Sunset Speedway. That 74 car was always at the front. Riding along with Brett Taylor, driver from Calgary, Alberta. And now looking at his teammate, Shea Gemmel in that number eight, battling right behind Mark Dilley in the 64. So one driver making his second start in the series, 
The other driver has made many starts in the series. And interesting, we should mention the 2020 season. The champion from 2020 is Shea Gimmel's crew chief here today, now. Jason Hathaway. One, one Harley now. Pete Shepard all over the back end of Rafael Lassard in that number 80. He's given Rafael Lassard lots to look at in his rear view mirror. He's really able to get into the corner well, get to the center well. Lassard looks to be coming off the corner a little faster than the 7. Yeah, and you can see the right front brake rotor glowing on the 80 of Rafael Lassard. It is not doing the same on the 7 of Pete Shepard. Caution on the track debris we're hearing from NASCAR. Turn 2. That yellow flag will give these drivers a break, let them reset, and of course, stack them all up. You broke the nose when you hit them. That's debris off of us. That's Dave Jacobs. Right now, I gotta get around real quick. The car owner, Pete Shepard, in the seven, who got a little bit too close for comfort on the 80 of Rafael Lassar trying to turn up the pressure. He was definitely feeling the back bumper of the 80 of Rafael Lassard in the turns. And as we said, it's been a very physical style of racing this season. We've seen it all over. There he is, the White Motorsports, Dave White and Donald Teague. You can see the cast on Donald Teague's wrist after breaking his hand. He's supposed to be in the 80 car. Unfortunately, couldn't go today, so he's got a suitable replacement in Rafael Lassard. You've got to think Donald T just quite pleased with how that 80 car is performing. He's invested a lot in that team with Dave White. We'll see more when we come back on TSN. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN as we get set to go back to green here in the General Tire 125. The 20-year-old from St. Joseph de Beauce in Quebec is your race leader. Raphael Lassard will lead him through four and back to the green flag here on lap 58. Some games being played on that race are going into three through three and four. Some cat and mouse going on. Looks like Lassard got the best of it for now. Lapsovich well within striking distance there in third as he got the better of the 17 of DJ Kennington. Now Kennington trying to hold strong up on the outside, not letting the youngster take too much of an advantage, but there is a little hole if Kennington can get back down there. I don't think he can. No, he kind of slid up the racetrack a little bit in three and four, but we've got to keep our eyes on this battle. Shepard really rolling the center well right now in that APC number seven, keeping the pressure high on Rafael Lassard. Yeah, you're right. He does close in the middle of the corners on the 80. And unfortunately, when he gets there, the back bumper of the 80 is there. Now he might have touched him as he tucks a nose underneath. Rafael Lassard looking for the lead. Bumper still there, still there. Lassard might not want to hear it, but he's hearing it. But the seven car is there. Shepard drives down into the turn. Lassard still able to come off a little bit better, but Shepard has position. Again, Lassard now the one trying to pinch the seven down on the inside, almost to that rumble strip, and Shepard will take the lead. Now look at that contact into one and two, and around goes the APC seven on Pete Shepard. Oh, Shea Gemmel, you didn't want to stop there, Gemmel. Slides oh, to a stop bad. on the inside in the grass. That was too bad. What do you do? Well, he definitely did it on purpose. Ah, uh, Dave Jacobs uh, voicing his opinion on what he felt he saw at first glance. And oh, Shea Kemmel doing a nice job to get that car rolling. I believe he has lost a lap down in the mud, but that could have been a whole lot worse. Well, let's have another look at what happened. Here's Shepard on the inside, takes the lead on the front straightaway. Oh, boy. Yeah, you, you saw the rear spoiler up in the air. Rafael Lassard in the left rear corner of the bumper has disappeared. This will give us a look. Let's listen. It, it looks like he got in very deep. Let's put Lassard, it politically. And Lassard say even straightened the wheel as he got to the back of the seven. There's Pete Shepard Jr., who is Pete Shepard the third's father, looking fairly unimpressed. Shepard and he, able to continue. He'll tag back onto the rear of the field. You see some damage to the left rear quarter. Yeah, that's... And now, Lassard was getting his back bumper beat off every corner. Right? Like, Shepard repeatedly. But Shepard was hitting him square in the back bumper. Lassard got Shepard in the left rear corner, turned him. 
with NASCAR, they will not announce a penalty until the field goes back to green. So we will know very shortly. Yeah, so right now it's under review as the green flag waves once again. Lassard, still your race leader now with Trayton Lapsovich up on the outside. Lapsovich looks a little bit squirrely getting down into the corner, but he wanted to get all there was. Got a great run through one and two. Have a look at who snuck up into third spot, the Rona Viagra, number 18 of Alex Dagliani, a two-time winner here at Sunset Speedway, is now starting to flex some muscle. What a battle for between a couple of youngsters, Lassard and Trayton Lapsovich, and we're hearing no penalty on Lassard. I don't know what you have to do to get a penalty if that is not a penalty. Have at it, boys. So Pete Shepard's going to try and get back to the front of the field and may try to take care of it himself. Three wide into turn number three. LP Dumoulin, the weather tech, John Chump on the outside, the O'Neill Electric, number 84 of Larry Jackson, the meat and that sandwich. You know you're angry as a race car driver if you put Larry Jackson in the middle of a three wide, the nicest man in motorsports. But Shepard's got places to go. I mean, he's, he's got to be fired up inside that car. Another driver's got places to go is Lapsovich in the quick quick number 20, running under the 22 racing banner with Scott Steckley overseeing that race team. And Lapsovich is coming. Shepard was hounding the 80, and now you can move that hat over to Trayton Lapsovich. He's there. Four Lapsovich Lee keeping the pressure on, but they look in their mirrors. They're not getting away from Tagliani, Kennington. I mean, the whole field is right back there. Seems like Lassard is able to find a groove up on the outside, keep that momentum going. A little bit of contact, right front tire of Lapsovich, the left rear tire of Rafael Lassard. You could see that telltale smoke come off as they went down into the turn. We are under yellow. So that's going to put a pause on that battle up at the front of the field, and this is the reason why. The seven of Pete Shepard with what appears to be a flat right front tire. Lots of sparks coming out the back of the APC number seven. Let's have a look here as he works to the inside of LP Dumoulin. Right there. Yeah. Yep. Contact. You see both cars lurch. Shepard goes down into the turn, did a nice job to keep that car off the concrete wall. Wheel to wheel, it won't take long before a rim cuts down a sidewall on these general tires. That was a pretty significant hit, though. But Shepard makes his way to pit lane, and that's where Todd Lewis is standing by. Todd? Pete Shepard eases that number seven car along pit road. It is a flat right front tire. That is the problem. Little trouble getting it up in the air. Now they're going. They'll swap that out and get Pete back in the fight. I'm impressed that LP Dumoulin's left rear held there. That was significant impact. Oh, and Pete Shepard does not beat the pace car. Yeah, that's going to hurt us. He'll lose a lap on pit lane, making those repairs to the right front quarter of the APC Chevrolet. There is your leader, Raphael Lazar. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross in the booth, Todd Lewis, and Kendra Adams pit side for us here today. And we have been handed a treat of a race. A phenomenal display of aggression, driving, car control, car out of control. It's all here. And it's getting down to the nitty gritty. So now that aggression level even steps a little higher as we're past the halfway mark. Now in the general tire, 125, when we go back to green, great start from the 80 of Raphael Lassard. Lassard gets that big drive off the corner, then moves all the way up as close clear, as he clear. can with Lapsovich in the wall to get the best run he could. That, that, that was picture-perfect restart. And you heard, heard the words that a driver would love to hear. Clear, clear. That means he can go anywhere on the track, and he has no other cars around him. Lapsovich's car, and I'm not sure if he was under attack there, if he might have got up on the rumble strips of the inside, but definitely the car upset a little bit, and he's having to look in his mirror and defend against Tagliani in the 18, DJ Kennington in the 17. It doesn't matter where he goes. If he goes high, he's got the 17 into his back bumper. If he goes low, the 18 is trying to maintain that position. Mark Tilly in the Leland Industries, NTN bearings number 64 out there. Having a great run, actually. He's worked his way up 
Had to start near the back of the field, but has quietly made his way up inside the top 10, currently working in seventh spot. Having a great run behind the GM Paye, number 22, Mark Antoine Cameron, the Motos Illimite, number 52 of Atlas Gannett. So there's really nowhere to go for Mark Dilley in that 64. We can tell you where he is going, and that's out of the car for Flamborough Speedway. Young racer Brandon Watson from Stainer, Ontario, a gifted stock car racer. He's going to wield that 64 machine when the series visits Flamborough Speedway. Now, Watson has won in pretty much everything he's driven. A mini stock, late model, limited late model, super late model. Whatever he gets in, he goes fast. It'll be a lot of fun to watch. And Mark Dilley has been a great mentor to a lot of young racers. So I'm sure he will be great in assisting Brandon Watson, helping him learn the ropes of these Pinty stock cars. Keeping an eye, our eye on the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin, who's been sort of mired at the back end of the top 10 for much of this race, but he's starting to make his way forward now as we have a battle for third as D.J. Kennington slips around the 18 of Alex Tagliani in the Arona Chevrolet. And there we see L.P. Dumoulin making a move on Mark Dilley, that WeatherTech number 47. I mean, there's a driver who, who used to be a road racer and he could hang in on ovals and contend for championships. He is now an all-around racer, as good on the ovals as he is on the road course. Well, remember, he kicked off the 2020 season with a win right here at Sunset Speedway, so he must feel comfortable. Two-time series champion is L.P. Dumoulin, 2014 and 2018. Finished sixth in race number one. 30 laps to go here in the general tire, 125. This is as big a lead as anybody has had here. Rafael Lassard out in front by a second over Trayton Lapsovich. You're wondering how far a second is? About 10 car lengths. And there you can see Gannett and the 64 of Mark Dilley. They have been racing around each other for the last several laps, about 20 of them as a matter of fact. And now they've gone side by side for about 10. Alex Gannett can be commended. You look at all the body panels are still on that number 52. He's been involved in situations, but he hasn't really damaged the race car, doing a nice job out there. As we look at now, L.P. Dumoulin to the inside of Alex Tagliani. That's a battle for fifth. Yeah, might be some issues on the Rona number 18 of Alex Tagliani because Cameron in the 22 went around for fourth, and now Dumoulin is around and inside the top five. Riding on board with Brett Taylor in the number three, Fast Eddie Speedwear machine. He has caught the back end of Mark Dilley in the 64. It's going to be an interesting Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières, the next stop on the NASCAR Pinty Series schedule. A number of new faces will make their very first start in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Sam Fellows, son of legendary Ron Fellows. As a matter of fact, Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer Ron Fellows, LP Montour who's a sports car racer, Kyle Marcelli, another Canadian sports car racer from right here in Barrie, will take over the reins of the Jacobs, number seven. Raphael Lassard will also be back for another race, not on an oval, but on a road course at Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. If Lassard keeps running the way he is, he has no commitment for the entire 2021 season, but if you're doing well on the points and you've got nowhere to be, is, does someone put him in that car? Does Donald Teach maybe step aside from the car and say, I'd rather ride his coattails to a championship being every bit as part of that team? Well, Raphael Lassard also has had a lot more laps than a lot of these drivers so far in 2021. He started in the Camping World Truck Series and then eventually moved back up to Canada. We were on board the O'Neill Electric number 84 of Larry Jackson. We see just behind Brett Taylor. That interval is closed up about a quarter of a second. And the leader is coming into lap traffic. So Trayton Lassovich is closed in. Over two tenths of a second on race leader Rafael Lassard, and this is not going to make things better as Lassard has been up on the outside of Brent Weller for the better part of this entire lap. Weller's doing what he needs to do. He's stuck to the inside. We've got 20 laps to go now. The 61 holding his line on the inside. It's just that he's got a little bit more pace than the back marker, so it's making life a little bit difficult for the leaders going by contact between the three of Brett Taylor and the 64 of Mark Dilley. Yeah, Taylor looked like he got on the throttle a little bit too hard or a little bit too early. Couldn't keep that three car down. 
has a little wobble there. Mark Dilly, the veteran that he is, able to hang that car up on the outside groove and maintain that battle. New look for the three car this year, backed by Fast Eddie Speedwear and TCB Trailers for Brett Taylor. Of course, he ran the 33 under the EHR banner last year. Look, more contact. You don't have to look far for contact tonight. If there's cars battling close, they're probably driving into each other. Look at Larry Jackson, the 84. He's sort of hanging back. He thinks something is going to play out between those two drivers, and that's what Larry Jackson does. It's not often you see the 84 come home in a box. That car is often all together because Larry Jackson, one of the smartest drivers in the NASCAR Pinty Series. He really is, an, and conservative out there. So he's a, he's, a, he's a good racer. He knows what to get out of his race car, and he rarely oversteps its limits but he will pounce if the opportunity presents. Oh, indeed he will. And you know who's pouncing? The 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. Look at the interval on your leader bar on the left-hand side of your screen. Half a second now. Five tenths between your race leader, Raphael Lassard, and Trayton Lapsovich. Not too long ago, that interval between the two top cars was over a second. And now you see Trayton has lost a tenth of a second. Traffic will do that. You know, it's situational. But you know what? Lapsovich is, is very close. At this point, he can smell blood. And he is going to sit up in his seat, put those elbows out, and get to work because he can close that gap in just a few laps. And he'll have to do something because we only have 13 to go. Laps are winding down as a hurry. As we look at Tagliani in the sixth spot now, focus goes back on Rafael Lassard out in front. And Trey Lapsovich really starting to reel him in in that 20 machine. The interval shows that it's almost seven tenths of a second, but I swear this is as close as we've seen him in a number of laps. Yeah, it's turning into a two horse race for sure at the front of the field. 2.3 seconds back to your third place driver in DJ Kennington, Cameron and Dumoulin round out your top five. It'll be 10 laps to go this time. As Alice Gannett, a little bit of a touch to Alex Tagliani, drives up the inside of the number 18. Give Gannett that sixth spot. It's a bump and run. That's how you move a driver in the NASCAR Pinty Series without wrecking them to drivers with loads of stock car experience in Tagliani and Alex Gannett. There's Shea Gamble once again, another great run in the top 10. That's a battle for ninth spot. Side by side into turn three. Larry Jackson right behind. He doesn't want to miss any opportunity. He'll drive to the inside of Mark Dilly. Dilly will try to get the door shut. No, nope, no chance there to get down on the racetrack. Larry Jackson is there. Eight laps to go that time by for your race leader, the 80 of Raphael Lassard. And this is the battle heating up for fourth position with the 47 of LP Jubilee and the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Big swing in the interval, though, down to six tenths now, back up to nine tenths. Scoring is messing with my mind. <laughs> We can tell you this one is tight, though, as you can see, the rear bumper cover missing off the back end of the PIA number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron, and Dumoulin is trying to fit his nose right up inside that cavity. Larry Jackson still working the inside of Mark Dilley, sends that car down into turn number three in a battle for the top ten. So Larry Jackson, the O'Neill Electric number 84, sticks it to the inside. Look at Dilly come back on the outside. Five laps remaining. Raphael Lassard, he has had control of this one. Can young Trayton Lapsovich do anything with the lead that Raphael Lassard has built? Well, he's definitely trying the interval now down to five tenths of a second once again. Lassard with a wiggle off a of turn number two, and Lapsovich will pounce, closing the gap to only a couple of car lengths. Wow! Trayton Lapsovich has found an extra gear, either that or Lassard is in trouble in that 80. That car will not stay on the bottom of the racetrack. Here goes Lapsovich. Lapsovich with a nose to the inside of the 80 of Rafael Lazard contact, and around goes second place Lapsovich. Oh my goodness. Out of nowhere came Lapsovich, closed in that whole gap, made a move to the inside. There was a little bit of contact there, Dave, but it didn't look dirty by any no, stretch. That was just hard racing. Watch it again. Going for the same real estate, and that's what you have to do. Lassard was trying to protect the lead. Let's look. One thing about the back stretch at Sunset Speedway is it is not straight. You're always turning a little bit. Uh, that just looked like hard racing for a lead. 
between two drivers who really wanted to win that race. Todd is on pit road. Donald, I know that's your car, the number 80 out there, and you didn't want to see this late caution. How nervous are you? You know, uh, I think the, the, the young Lasovic was fast too. And I know what happened. You know, I was t trying to talk with David. You know, we got maybe five or six uh, long, longer car, and uh, he get off on, uh, get, get in on, on us. So I don't know what happened. We're going to see green, white checker. I think we got a good car, a good driver. The team is ready. I think uh, he did his job today. And uh, what a weekend we had, you know, with that kid in the, in the car, in the Haiti car. Watch the finish. Yeah. Well, you heard Donald Teach. It's going to be a green, white checker as we're into NASCAR overtime here in the General Tire 125 at Sunset Speedway. Getting set for a green, white checker to settle it here in the General Tire 125 at Sunset Speedway. We're into NASCAR overtime. Raphael Lassard has been dominant and he has set the quick wick hottest lap with a time of 14.862 seconds this top five you want to talk about aggression look at row number two lp doom on the 47 mark antoine cameron in the 22 he's been involved in so much tonight yet here he is with a chance at victory the field stacks up in turn number four. Now you can hear the reps pick up the green flag waves. Look at Kennington dive down to the inside right away. And Kennington had the opportunity there. It was sort of a dance getting down into the corner, not to get run over by L.P. Dumoulin, but it, he's clearly trying to not get all over Rafael Lazard either. He wants to settle it clean. Speaking of all over each other, the 22 and 47 rubbing for third, but out in front. Is the 20 year old from Quebec, Raphael Lassar, victorious in race number one? He'll do it again in race number two at Sunset Speedway. And they're wrecking in the back. The 22 of Cameron is around in turn number four. The cars were everywhere. Raphael Lassar's team celebrating TJ Renamato. We see him parked in turn number four. Mark Antoine Cameron going to finish this race in reverse. Watching through the rearview mirror, he'll cross the line. But have another look at what happened. On board with Trayton Lapsovich, contact with Brett Taylor. Mark Antoine Cameron goes around. Lapsovich comes through for a fourth place finish. From ninth to fourth. But that driver, the man of the hour once again, Raphael Assard picks up his second straight here in 2021. What a weekend of racing. Great times for Raphael Lassard. We'll be back with Victory Lane. It is becoming routine here at Victory Circle on the oval tracks for Raphael Lassard. The smile is unmistakable. The success once again. He comes out to the cheers of his team and thrusts that number one finger up in the air to celebrate a victory here at Sunset Speedway. This time you spent most of the time out in front, but did have to fend off some challenges, especially late in the race, to hold on to the win. Oh yeah, Trayton was very, very good. I was trying my best to hold on to him. I was very loose and he was coming at the end. I got really loose in one and two. And I don't know if he got his step, his rear steps out or something, because I was holding my lane. Uh, I hate that happened to him. But man, it, it feels good. It feels good to win in a row. Again, thanks everyone at TJ uh, Chevrolet and all my family and everybody, all the fans in the stand. It was a great night. A great night, a great win again for Rafael Lassard. High fives all around. And Adam, it was a great night for a lot of drivers. So we'll get a chance to see the finishing results in the Mopar Top 18 here from Sunset Speedway. But we know Trayton Lapsovich came home fourth, going from ninth to fourth. Look at Brett Taylor, top five. Great top five finish for Brett. Larry Jackson with a seventh place result. Shea Gemmel with another top ten. Heartbreak for a couple of drivers, though. Mark Antoine Cameron, 12th. Andrew Ranger all the way down in 16th. Kendra standing by with your second place finisher. All righty, DJ Kennington, you finished second here today at Sunset Speedway after a really poor first race. You had some car issues. Tell us how it feels to be back in second after a bad first race. Ah, it's great. I mean, the guys battled hard. The Castro Edge Dodge was good all night. I mean, that's just race and lock. I mean, it's the way it goes. We had another fuel pump uh, quit in the first race, and then the second one, the car was really good. Uh, just lacking a little bit of turn in the center, but uh, 
you know, come back from that and finish second, that's a great night for us. And like I say, Castro, Will Ride, uh, Spark Power, everybody that helps us, Kath, Brian Cathcart, Country Collision, thank you so much. And uh, Castro was here with us tonight, and it's awesome to see. And uh, good crowd here at Sunset, so that's good. Not the way we wanted to start, but we had a good finish of the night. On to Three Rivers. And it is going to shake up the points just a little bit. Remember, Lassard came in with a four-point lead over Andrew Ranger. Ranger now down to seventh. And, and Lassard's not on the radar for these drivers. So Dumoulin can feel really good. Kendra is with him right now. LP Dumoulin crosses the stripe third at the General Tire 125 here at Sunset. Tell us what track position means. You were there, you weren't, and then you were there at the end. What does it mean to get this third place? Yeah, I wasn't too sure at all, actually, uh, with uh, 40 laps uh, remaining. I mean, that WeatherTech Benmar car was decent. Uh, we had strange days. So I think it was the same for everybody, but uh, I, we didn't know we were right on the setup. But at the end, I think uh, it, just, it just opened up to us, and we had a good run and uh, outside and inside. We had a good fight with uh, Camille there. It was, uh, we tried to stay clean to each other, but, you know, it's, it's, it's very slippery out there with old tires at the end, and we're, we all won those, uh, those points in the championship. So very happy with third place, and uh, uh, we're looking forward for the, the rest of the championship. LP Dumoulin goes home for the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières, but there he is, the winner, back-to-back -to, -back to start the 2021 season here in the NASCAR Vinci Series. This NASCAR on TSN broadcast from Sunset Speedway has been brought to you by Fast Eddie Speedwear. Combustion culture collection available at fasteddiespeedwear.com. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By General Tire, the exclusive tire of the NASCAR Pinty Series. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. Dave, what a way to kick off the 2021 NASCAR Penny Series. A couple of races on the ovals did not disappoint. We knew this was going to be a hard fought, short track battle. There was lots of bumping, lots of grinding. And in the end, it was a youngster from Quebec, 20 year old Raphael Lassard wins two here at Sunset Speedway. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.